President Trump will kick off his 2020 re-election campaign with a rally in Orlando next week. And with that, we bring in Florida Talk radio host Brian Mudd. Brian, good to talk to you. Uh, here is how the president summed up his view of a potential challenger on Fox and Friends yesterday. Take a listen. Everybody knows Joe is is doesn't have it. Now I see that Pocahontas is doing better. I would love to run against her, frankly. I see that Bernie Sanders is not doing well at all. I would have, frankly, liked to have run against. I think it's probably those three. I don't see the other ones. I really don't see it. He went on to say a few things about Mayor Pete uh, as well. You think the president has this analyzed pretty well for Florida? When it comes to Florida, there are a couple things to keep in mind, and that is that the politics here, especially on the left, can be complicated because of the prevalence of the Hispanic vote, but also the difference with the Hispanic constituency in Florida. You might remember, Leland, that prior to Election Day last, uh, last year, I was telling you that Republicans were actually sell to uh, outperform at the top of the ticket because many Hispanics were concerned in Florida about the progressive and, and specifically socialistic tendencies of candidates like Andrew Gillum. And indeed, we saw that at the top of the ticket in Florida, Republicans outperformed and we saw that Democrats perform better down ballot where those issues weren't as much of a concern. So I think when you're talking 2020 Democrats and Florida politics in particular, the candidate and the flavor of the progressive yeah, but, versus but you, social... You think about it, DeSant DeSantis won over Gillum by four-tenths of a percentage point. And you were right, it was a lot closer than the polls had it. They had Gillum uh, up. But nevertheless, that socialist message that Gillum came out from nowhere with meant that the president and a lot, number of surrogates had to basically live in Florida to get DeSantis elected and Rick Scott uh, to take out Senator Nelson. You're 100% correct, Leland, but when you take a look at the context of the election cycle and how favorable it was for Democrats, it speaks volumes that they were able to pull out these wins uh, with the governor's race and flip that Senate seat that you referenced with our former governor, now Senator Rick Scott, taking out a long-term incumbent in Joe Biden. All right, so fair point. So, yeah. so your, your point is, no, is essentially that Republicans are going to outperform if you put a socialist at the top of the ticket or a very liberal Democrat at the top of the ticket. Here is the 2020 Democrats version the president, Joe Biden, up by 13 percent. Bernie Sanders up by nine. Uh, Kamala Harris up by eight. Mayor Pete, uh, Pete Buttigieg up by five points. Cory Booker also up by five points. That's that's a lot more than just a little bump uh, of outperformance that you need to overcome that margin. Oh, sure. And at this time, four years ago, Hillary Clinton beat every Republican contender Fair head point. to head. I think Rubio performed the best, losing to her by four points. And Trump, I think, was 18 points off of Hillary Clinton in a hypothetical <laughs> four years ago at this point. So you, you can take those yeah. polls with uh, a grain of salt. But when you're talking about Ford in particular, Biden might be fit the uh, Democrats in our state the best. But I also think he has challenges in other states if they go that way. Uh, I briefly mentioned this last time we spoke, but if you take a look, President Trump's strongest uh, performance has been with likely voters. His weakest has been with adult-only voters. And I think a 2020 Democrat nationally that does a good job of bringing new voters into the party stands the best chance of attacking Trump's weakness nationally. But mm. that is a catch-22 in Florida because, again, I think what plays nationally is not in the best interest of Democrats in Florida, given our electorate specifically here. Well, great thoughts, as always. Interesting analysis. Jessica Tarlov had a piece uh, echoing some of those thoughts uh, on The Hill uh, magazine, thehill.com, for that. Brian, good to see you, sir. Uh, as always, appreciate you. you taking the time on a Saturday. Love being with you. Appreciate right. it, Leland. Enjoy the Be Florida well. sun. Jillian? You got it.